First of all, I would like to thank the organizers for inviting me, and especially uh, my friend, uh, Professor Juan Feliu. I think it's a very interesting idea to put people together from different countries because I believe that we all face the same issue is how to do clinical research, how to involve physicians in research in the hospital setting or outside the hospital. And just to introduce myself very briefly, I am MD, PhD, trained as a diabetologist, um, but currently I'm f I have three activities. That's the way it goes in France, and I will tell you how it works. I am chairman and professor of biochemistry molecular biology. I'm the chief of clinical chemistry of three university hospitals, and I have an INSERM laboratory. And I have been counsel of the director of INSERM for diabetes and metabolism. So in the first couple of slides, I'd just like to introduce you to the research in France, which I, th I think is quite unique. It has its failures, which we came across through a couple of years ago, and uh, major changes are going on, which I think some might be of interest to you, because I think some of them obviously uh, are started to work, especially in, in the medical world. So the organization of the French system, there is uh, public research going on in what we call research organizations and universities, and they're very separate at this point. And of course, we have, like every country, more general research, if I can say so, and specialized, uh, specialized organizations work on particular teams. There are approximately 200,000 people in France involved in the public research, uh, scientists or like. And these people have a faculty position or are members of a research organization. Now, these organizations, that, like I said, uh, they could be public institutions in science and technology. We call them in France EPST for Etablissement Public à Caractère Scientifique et Technologique. And with government employees, they are basically of three organizations, the CNRS, Centre National de Recherche Scientifique, which covers mainly basic sciences, but also some life sciences, and I'll come back to that later on. There's INSERM, Institut National de la Santé de la Recherche Médicale, which is mainly uh, concerned with life sciences and health problems. And then we have the equivalent at the level of agriculture called INRA, and then we have a couple of special foundations which are publicly owned, which is the Curie Institute in, in Paris and a couple of Pasteur Institutes all over France. And then there are a couple of institutions which are public, but we do have a very important industrial and commercial domain, they are, and they also have employees of the private sector. Uh, there's an organization involved in atomic research called CRA, the space research, and then there's a very important one coming close to the medical world is INRIA, which is involved in computer science and medical imaging. And I will come back to that later issue later on. Now, the, the what we call higher education in France, établissement d'enseignement supérieur, supérieur, there are about 85 universities in France and about 45 medical schools of medical faculties. In addition to that, there are a couple of other organizations involved with higher education. But what you have to understand is that at this point, the public research is done not that much in university laboratories, and it's one of the weak points of the French system, but it's done in uh, laboratories which are owned or governed by INSERM or CNRS. And if you look at that, there are about 3,000 research groups in France which have either people paid by INSERM or CNRS or people having joint appointments, and I would come back uh, to that uh, later on. But it's important to know that at this point, very few, at least in the life sciences, very good research, if I can say so, is going on in pure university laboratories, but most of it is going on in uh, laboratories owned or governed by INSERM and CNRS. Now, INSERM, which is the organization which is uh, the most important one at the, the level of the life science and health, it was created in 1964, about 50 years ago, from a National Institute of Hygiene. And one particularity also, it is reporting to two ministries, the Minister of Higher Education and Research and the Minister of Health. So it has two bosses, which doesn't make it simple. 
And it is the only French research institute which is entirely dedicated to biological, medical, and public health research. And it ensures really a continuum going from basic, uh, uh, from basic research to clinical application. And I will discuss that in, in a couple of seconds. Now, in some couple of numbers, people like numbers, that in 2007, there were approximately 300 in some laboratories in France, 25 research centers, because labs can be organized at a higher level in research center. There's one thing you might be interested in, we can discuss in, in detail later. There are about 50 clinical centers of 50, I'm sorry, 54 clinical investigation centers at the hospital level, which are owned and governed by INSERM. There are about 7,000 people paid by INSERM. Uh, it has a rather active uh, patent portfolio, and it accounts for about 25 of the French publication, of which 30 are of the French top level. Now, that's what I mean by that, and the INSERM is proud of that. There are some failures at this level we can discuss, but it really, if you look at the different laboratories, which are in some laboratories, you have laboratories involved in rather basic research, in preclinical uh, clinical, pre -clinical studies. Then INSERM is also involved in the second step, uh, the clinical proof of concept, phase one or phase two, of, of, and that's done in uh, not in the research laboratories themselves, but in clinical centers which are governed by INSERM and which are in hospitals. Uh, this step is most of the time not in the hands of INSERM, that is phase 2B and 3. That is done by pharmaceutical companies with which INSERM has privileged links. And then the phase, the phase 4 again comes in the hands of INSERM because INSERM has set up a couple of years ago all, all over France uh, interesting clinical cohorts which people can give if you want to uh, to people involved in clinical research. Now, but like I said in the beginning, the, the system is quite unique, I believe, in Europe and over the States, is that, like I said, very little research in the life sciences is going on in the French universities, and that is going to change in the, com in the, in the, co the coming years. The French universities have a real problem because they do not master at all their salary bill, they don't pay the professors, I mean, it's another organization, they don't own buildings, they don't select their professors, there are different commissions to do that, and they also are not or very rarely involved in the governing of the research units. Last year, there was a major revolution, if I can say it's in the French education system, a research system, is that the universities will become independent. That is, they will have their own money, if I can say so, and they will decide themselves who they like to appoint and uh, for how many years, things like that. So they will have a total re, uh, new organization by the fact that the universities will become independent. And in that totally new environment, at least new for us in France, INSERM has come up as the, the unique coordinator of the research program in the health sector and in the medical sciences. And that is very recent, like you see, and that's why it's very exciting uh, to be here, but to discuss this new evolution, because I think some of the new development might be also of interest to you. Now, the, the reason why the ministers uh, came to that idea of, of changing the university and the research world is that, obviously, in France, uh, there are way too many actors involved in the life sciences, and really, uh, people want to uh, have a coordinator, a unique coordinator, and give much more power to the university instead of these research organizations also at the level of the funding agencies, which I will uh, give you a couple of uh, comments about that. And what is also entirely new is that INSERM has initiated a national uh, move to have thematic uh, institutes, institutes. Just to give you an idea about the complexity, at, like I said, at the present time, there are about 160 research units with about 300 staff researchers. CNRS has about uh, 
shares only within some about 100 uh, staff researchers and INRA, which is involved with agriculture science, shares some, but not many of them. What it means is it's really needed to have a coordination at the level of one of the actors, and that's the idea is to put this in some as the coordinator, not for all research, but the coordinator for the health sciences and for biomedical research. And the initiative now is, is ex like I said, extremely recent, is to set up in France, in the health sciences, institutes kind of mimicking the National Health uh, Institutes of the NIH uh, in, in the United States, and that the different organizations which currently exist, which is INSERM, INRA, Sinarize, and hospitals, that they would come together at the level of the institutes and that your coordination would be done uh, by INSERM. And I can just give you uh, the, the examples of the institutes we have defined, I've been involved in, in those things a little bit. And a new concept also is that we have one unique funding agency now, which is called ANR, for uh, as a national research agency, which is giving most of the funding away to the life sciences and the medical research, which is also entirely new. That depends of the health programs from the Ministry of Health, and we also have now a unique evaluation institution. That institution is evaluating all the laboratories independently if they are in some in Rasenais or the hospitals. Until 2007, INSERM had its own evaluation committees, CNIS has its own ones. Now we have set up in France a unique organization which is called ARS, which evaluates all the laboratories independently who is paying for the laboratories. And I think this is our major changes, so we have a single funding agency now and a single evaluation uh, uh, committee, which is of course national, but it is working with international um, with international uh, people which are involved in the evaluations. So these are for INSERM, the institution, they have been set up at the level of INSERM for the moment, so of course there is cancer, infectious diseases, neurosciences, circulation, metabolism, and nutrition, immunology, hematology, and pneumology, genetics, health technologies, and more clinical research. These are already existing at the level of INSERM, and we are now negotiating uh, to have the same institute recognized by the senior as people and the INRA people, which is not uh, set up, is not achieved yet, but that's the hope. Uh, of course, uh, given the fact that I'm a diabetologist, I'm involved in the setting up of the Institute for Circulation, Metabolism and Nutrition. So the idea is really to have one or to have ten institutions, uh, but a single one which will regroup the INSERM laboratories, CNRS, and the INRA laboratories. And that would be important for the program, uh, programming of the research, the coordination, and the societal changes. Another interesting thing, I believe, is that more and more we like to uh, have patient association and physician societies involved in uh, the research directly by giving uh, directions or at least expressing their will uh, of wishes they would like to see some research to be done. And I think the idea to associate the patient association is uh, entirely new, at least uh, for France. Now, more coming, uh, talking about uh, the people, if we look now at the biomedical research done in university hospitals, there are different organizations doing that at the present time. Most of the research in the hospitals is done by INSERM units, some CNS units are involved, and this occurs in the hospital themselves or close on the same campus. A unique, I think, a system also set up about 10 years ago by INSERM are these centers for clinical investigation. They are quite unique in the sense they are set up in particular hospitals. They have a couple of beds, and if you have an in interesting or intelligent, I would say, clinical project, you submit it to a, a review committee, and then you have access to the beds, 
of uh, this particular hospitals and also to the cohort uh, that hospital might have. So the clinical centers not only do the res clinical research of that particular hospital, but they are also open to uh, projects which have been asked to be performed in by that clinical center. Like I told you, uh, in some uh, and senior laboratory have scientists as uh, employees. Most of them are PhDs, some of them are MD, and some have this joint appointment like me, which I come back to later on. Uh, what is also going on in France for the last three years is that the clinical departments are going to disappear uh, in the coming years, probably within 10 years, and that the hospitals are organized, what we call the pool, uh, for, for example, all the cardiovascular people are getting together, not only with the cardiovascular people, but also with the diabetes people, and the, the, the head of the departments are disappearing, we have a super boss, and then we have small units which are changing depending on the, the needs. So the, the departments themselves will probably disappear within five or six years. And we have a very interesting example in this where there's a gastroenterology poll where the surgeon's uh, department disappeared and they are now fused with small units of the gastroenterology. So it's a total new concept to have the departments of surgery disappearing and they're mingled within the gastroenterology people. And supposedly it's economically interesting, but also uh, I believe that most of the people are happy about this new organization. Now the funding of the research done in university hospitals, the basic research is funded most of the time by INSERM and CNRS, and I can come back to that later on. There are really major efforts to, uh, uh, to favor, if I can say, young scientists, if you're over 40 in France for the moment, it's very difficult to get funding or more difficult. And there are special grants for young people called Avenir, I mean future from INSERM or a tip uh, from CNRS. There's also funding from, uh, of course, for cl more clinical research. For the topics which are more general, if I can say, so we have a particular program which is called PHRC, Program Hospitalier de Recherche Clinique. That is only for clinical research. We have a national program and an interregion program. Uh, I'm, I'm the, uh, the, 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 um, the chairman of uh, the interregion Nice, Marseille, Montpellier, Nîmes, where the money is distributed and favoring interactions between the hospitals of these three uh, major cities. And then we also have funding given by a specialized uh, organization for AIDS, for example, as ANRS. We have now an institute, a national institute for cancer. And then, of course, we have private foundations which also fund some, but not much, of public, of uh, universe hospital research. Now, what are the opportunities in France if you're a physician or a scientist? You could have a uh, only in hospital position, that we call a, a clinical assistant in English or praticien hospitalier, those people are supposedly to do full-time clinical work. Some of these people do have the opportunity to do some clinical research, and that is true mainly for the biologists. It is very rare to find a surgeon who has a, a clinical associate uh, position to do research. That's probably, he has no time and he's not motivated to do that. But then you have the famous people, not the famous people, the people have big joint appointments. Half of their salary comes from the university and half come from the hospital. You could be at a junior level and then you are what we call in French un maître de conférence université, praticien hospitalier, or you could be like me at a professor level and then supposedly you have, you are obliged to do three things. One third of your time you have to do research, one third of your time you do teaching, and one, term, you have, one third of your time you do hospital work. In reality, most of the p people do very little or no research. Some of them, and that is my case, although I'm trained as a diabetologist, but I do function as a biologist, we can do quite a fair amount uh, for a couple of reasons, uh, research. Now, also note, and I think there's a particularity for the French system, that to be a, a junior uh, joint appointee, I can say, so what we call MCPH, you have to have a PhD 
or an MD plus PhD, depending on your specialty. What I mean is that to be a surgeon, of course, you have to be an MD, but to be an immunologist or biochemist, work in the clinical chemistry department, you, you can be either a PhD or an MD, but if you are an MD, you have to have an audition to that a PhD. If you want to become professor, you can be PhD and you have to have, you have, to have also done a postdoc and to be a professor of medicine, you have to have an MD, a PhD, and you must have done a postdoc. Now, at the level of intern seniors, you can be appointed either as an MD or PhD. And it starts most of the time with a non-tenured position, which we call CDD, which is given for three or five years, and that is a national competition. So it's not given locally, it's a national competition. At that, after that, you can apply for a tenured position, and again, it's a national competition. You can be a junior, which call, we call chargé de recherche, or senior level, and uh, that can bring you to different grades. Now, there are a couple of very uh, put, uh, specific, specific aspects in this system, is that the, once you're tenured, you have no stringent control except when you ask for a promotion. That is, you're controlled, if I can say so, on your publication record when you want to go from CR2 to CR1 or from DR2 to DR1 to DR0. Very strange also for the French system, and we try to get away with that, is that the job is owned by the person. That is, if you get a job at a national level, you can go for five years to Nice, for example, and for whatever reason, you don't like the climate anymore, or you don't like your boss, you take your job and you can go to Marseille, for example. And that makes, I think, it's great for the scientists, particularly when they're young, that gives them a lot of mobility, but extremely difficult if you're the head of the department, because suddenly your lab can be empty overnight because people, more for a bizarre reason, might prefer the rain in Paris than the sun in Nice. It doesn't happen often, but that, that can happen uh, uh, in theory. Now, the problem we also have at the level of interim CNRS is that the salary obviously is insufficient, and that's one of the reasons why very few MDs are interested, because in the hospital they probably most of the time own about two times more than a scientist pay by a senior as uh, an, uh, an insum. And uh, to attract MDs to, be, uh, to compete for insum and senior job, job, the French government has set up a bonus to give you the, exactly the number of about 1,500 euro a month on a contract basis. It's not included in your salary, which is given for five years renewable. And I think one of the, it's a very interesting initiative. You can have a contract uh, with the hospital that is then you have to involved, be involved in clinical research, but you can set up a contract with the university and then instead of doing 100% research, you do teaching and you can also set up a contract with a particular industry and then you are a consultant up to a certain time. So that's been a way, a recent way, which works up to a point to attract more physicians uh, to accept a senior as an insan position is to give this bonus, which is not included, like I said, in the salary, which is a contract given for five years, but renewable. Now, what about the physicians or the PhDs who, who, wants to, who want to have a university position? And we have quite the same setup at the level of the hospitals. It's most of the time it starts out with a non-tenured position. We call this AHU, Assistant Hospitalier Universitaire, which is given for two years and then two times renewable for one year. It is, that is a local recruitment. It is the dean and the head of a hospital which appoints you. And you have to be a PhD or an MD, depending on the specialty, if you want to do that in surgery. Of course, you have to be an MD. But if you do that in the clinical chemistry department, you're also able to do that with a PhD degree. Then after these four years, you can apply for a tenured job. And then again, and that is really illustrating the fact that the university so far has no power. You appointed professor or assistant professor by a national committee depending on your specialty. So the university itself has very little to say at this point on the elimination of the professors and that is like I said is changing, is going to change. 
Now, and also a very recent initiative which has been initiated by INSERM and CNRS is the following one. They have created the equivalent for the scientists, but now for the physicians, is that we call a contrat d'interface, interface contract, which is given by INSERM and CNRS, and that is to allow physicians to be relieved for three to five years on a full-time or half-time basis, but keeping their clinical salary, and for that period, of course, in agreement with the head of the department, they can be relieved for three or five years and to work in a research laboratory. And in return, the clinical department receives the equivalent of that salary to appoint somebody to do, do the clinical work that clinician cannot do anymore because he's doing research. The only problem we have is that it is difficult to replace senior physicians because with that kind of money most of the time you, the hospital receives in return is not sufficient uh, to appoint a senior surgeon for example. So it is a very good initiative at the level of the, senior, the junior physicians but very difficult for the senior ones. Now to summarize in the, in the last two slides, what are the problems we, occur, we have in France with the current system? for the clinicians to do to attract to research. It is true that they have a tremendous workload in the clinical departments, and as you know, if you're working in the anesthesiology department or the surgery department, they really the European regulation has changed a lot. Uh, if you do t uh, 24 hours of work, then you have to recover the next day. So there are really regular constraints which make it diffi very difficult, at least in some specialties. There is certainly also a lack of motivations of the physicians. And the only exception we have is that when the young physicians wants to become professor of medicine or whatever professor he wants to be in the hospital, he has to have a PhD. So they come in the laboratory work very hard for three or four years, get their PhD, become professor, and then most of them disappear for, due to lack of motivation or just because they do not have time. And I also I think that is my personal experience, and I do my laboratory does try to attract physicians. Uh, that it is very difficult in 2008 to define the precise role of a physician clinician, in particular in basic uh, science teams, because uh, of course, given even they are not there full time to do research in a very high competitive fashion, it is done now, it's very difficult. And I think what I should really favor, and that again, we're doing a lot in France now, and particularly in my own hospital in, in Nice, is that we try to involve the physician, not that much in the basic science, but doing a translation research and taking advantage of the, the high technology uh, most of the hospitals do have, like a spec, uh, mass spectrometry, and those equipment most of the time are not used, at least in, in this 100%, and to open those high technology uh, platforms uh, to basic research, and that favor the interaction and the involvement in the physician by uh, doing this translation research. Now, a couple of suggestions we, uh, for attracting and keeping physicians in research, if I uh, may suggest you a couple of things we'll be trying to do, at least in France, is uh, it is also going on, already going on in France, to offer the possibilities to be relieved of clinical duties. And we have this program now set up for junior physicians, which we call the Contrat d'Interface, where the young uh, physicians can be relieved for three or five years completely uh, from their clinical duties and can do research in laboratories. And we also have to set up this now for more senior physicians where it is more difficult to be relieved, especially in some specialties, to be relieved two or three months per year uh, full time. And also we're encouraging again the old fashioned sabbatical uh, one year every seven years full time in the research laboratories. I think we also have realized that one has to create appropriate structures to uh, welcome uh, physician scientists by creating the centers of clinical investigations which are doing excellent uh, clinical research. And we also are favoring to set up research team in close vicinity of the clinical departments. I think that's important because if you have to cross the city, waste the one hour in traffic jam, that would not help the couple of hours one physician might have in one day. 
And then also what we are uh, very much favoring for the moment in France is to facilitate access to the res to research team by offering uh, brainstorming and training opportunities in tra new technologies because the technologies are really evolving very fast and to make a major effort in defining exactly the role a physician might have in, in a particular project to avoid a frustration of the physician and of this uh, scientist. And then also what we try to do is to increase and sustain the motivation to put a lot of emphasis on the publications, on the promotions of the physician scientists. And what we have now, and we can discuss that later on the details, is that uh, we have a tremendous competition in France between the private sector uh, hospitals and university hospitals. And the only way the university hospitals will survive is uh, through uh, quality research, because uh, the private hospitals so far do not do much research, and that would be the unique property of the university hospitals and the health system is such now that we have a tremendous pressure also to fuse with some private hospitals but that the, the university hospitals we keep the uh, priority to do research and we the, the money a hospital will get in France will be of course the quality of their clinical care but also the quality of their training and their clinical research. Thank you.